It's time for the Gizwiz with Mad's maddest writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1697, recorded Thursday, October 18th, 2018, as seen on Gizwiz TV. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have three gadgets from the luxury show, so you know you're gonna not be able to afford any of them. I have some absolute vaporware that you can buy. That's a little riddle for you. And a viewer video. All next on The Giz It's the same show with Dickie D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for The Giz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs growing blue and yellow. Get ready for the Giz Whiz now. Now! Now! And here he is, our captain of gadget industry, Dick D. Bartolo. How are you doing, Dickie D? Uh, I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing good myself. I just came back from the second to last uh, show <laughs> that I'll be doing this year. And my next one isn't for another two weekends. So uh, really happy about that. That gives enough room for our Gizwiz meetup this weekend. Yes, this weekend, this Sunday. I'm very excited uh, about that. I know, that's good. And yeah. it's at Disneyland, which is good because our normal, where we had the first seven, uh, closed unexpectedly because it's freezing. Not literally, it's not 32, but it's in the 50s uh, in New York City. So the restaurant just closed. Uh, so Disneyland is perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, and you're going to do been, like um, <laughs> up, up, up the river. The um, Yeah. <laughs> we would have been up the Hudson. Uh, up the if, Hudson with a, <laughs> we didn't, an yeah, ice without, paddle. Yeah, exactly. So good thing that we uh, threw it at Disneyland this year. If you didn't hear, we've been talking about it for the last ton of Gizwiz. You can head on over to Dick's blog and log over at gizwiz.biz and find out information. If you happen to be in the New York City area this weekend... Or if you want to join us virtually, you can just head on over to gizwiz.tv on Sunday around, uh, I think we decided... About 2.30. Two exactly, 2.30. 2.30 um, New York time, um, was that, 11.30 California time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll see you guys then over the weekend. We got a good show. You headed to the luxury... The luxury, the luxury technology show. show. Now... If uh, you're new to the Gizwiz, this is like really a wacky show. I mean, wacky for us because we can't afford anything. Uh, but you find incredible things. And so just to refresh your memory, if you've seen the show or if you've not seen it, this is the most unique thing I ever found at the Luxury Technology Show. Uh, it was when Chad and I first started doing it. So this is an airplane, Cyrus, the Cyrus airplane with... Uh, something Engine called troubles. Cat. <laughs> Engine <laughs> troubles, yes. But now the plane is is flowing down and moving down, but it has caps. The Cirrus airframe parachute system that lets you land the entire airplane and its occupants. Now, they don't show us where it's landing, uh, <laughs> but the company says that and this was four years ago, they had saved, let me see, something like 500 people had been saved with the CAP system. That's a lot of millionaires uh, yeah, still in, uh, <laughs> in the world because of that. Yeah, it's exactly. pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> all right, so now something a little more, actually, Chad, this is good for you. Not good for New Yorkers. Wait, we, but before you, you move on, this is a luxury technology show. You got you to gotta tell me. It must have been awesome to be there. I mean, well, right? There's just giving you diamonds, you know, as oh, party yes, gifts. Yes, yes, yes. And like, yes, uh, yes. you know, I mean, well, it's you just know, a, a lot of it. <laughs> a lot of it is, you know, like diamond encrusted USB drives. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, normal uh, technology you expect. Yes, Just yes, yes. With a, with a few extra zeros. At the with a few end extra zeros, exactly. Oh, you know, if you can pull it up fast, my favorite thing there is, is that a photo. Oh, uh, yes, take a look at this. Oh my the gosh, they had this <laughs> one. There were, 
It is the first event I went to where the dessert table was bigger than the food table. I mean, cream puffs <laughs> and a tray of, of uh, those Italian cookies. And, oh, oh, that was just amazing. And look, that they even was... have some to go. So you can just take <laughs> yeah, a bag with you. <laughs> I kept thinking, would anybody miss this if I put this in my backpack? Yeah. And, and go off to the right there because my my my, my favorite cookie is on that tray there those multicolored cookies <sighs> um uh, third tray down right just move this, your cursor up oh, up up a little yeah up one. one more oh wow those cookies oh my gosh <laughs> i don't think you know you could as long as you know you're in new york so as long as you can fit it on a subway uh getting home <laughs> i think that it's fair game <laughs> oh gosh! I, I, yeah. Well, I must admit, I I snuck about four cookies into my. I kept saying, <laughs> Dennis, is anybody looking? I'm throwing five chocolate chip cookies into my backpack. <laughs> um, That's great. All right, so we didn't go for the cookies, but we loved the cookies. Uh, so we're going to start with um, a really interesting gadget here from the Luxury Technology Show, and that is called the Smart Flower. OK, because it looks like a flower. Actually, you'll, uh, the, it's too big to get into conventions uh, in the uh, exhibition hall. So it was out on the street and this is what it looks like. So the solar uh, flower is I, I believe it's 18 feet in diameter. And we have a little video from the company to show you how it works. So here, here's their video. So it says it's a flower-shaped solar panel system. This is the prototype. Yes, I don't know why they, yeah, they've already started delivering them. The Smart Flower is a solar energy system developed by Australian firm. Petal-shaped solar panel. I think space. it's Austrian. Austrian, oh. Right. <laughs> Never give the dyslexic the job to read. <laughs> it, moves, it moves to follow the sun around. Totally portable. Uh, I, I don't get that. Totally portable. And then it goes to sleep huh. at night. Okay. I, I, and then I asked him, what, what about uh, wind? And he said, at 29 miles an hour, it goes totally flat. And at 30 mi uh, 39 miles an hour, the pedals fold up and it closes down so that there can be no wind damage. Um, there is an option to charge electric cars. Now, what? how much would you pay? <laughs> I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I, oh, okay. So, okay. so let me guess. So... <laughs> I, we're in a just totally different category. Once you go into the luxury category, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've been thinking of questions to ask you, and I've been dismissing them all. Like, you know, why? <laughs> why oh, well, why? Well, first of, well, why? well, first of all, according to the company, it's forty percent more uh, it develops forty uh, percent more solar power because it actually oh, because follows, it follows the sun. Carefully right. and right. even can flatten out, can you, you know, the angle. Whereas permanent solar panels, they right. probably only have an optimum maybe a couple times a day or a couple hours a day. Right. And, whereas yeah. this follows the sun. So they right. say it's 40% more efficient. Because if you can get a solar panel that is like 90 degrees or like, you know, right on the sun, way better than at an angle. Or anything like that. So if you just have solar panels on your roof, um, but one of the reasons I just like throw out the why question is just because it's luxury. <laughs> it's, you know, so like who the people who would be getting this are millionaires, I guess, like people who just like the idea of of a of a f solar panel that is also a flower. But then yes. also I would assume like shopping malls or businesses or yes. You yes. know, that's well, the, sort of clientele. Yes. Is, exactly. Is, well, the good news is that if you're a customer, well, I'll tell you, it's $25,000, okay. 24950 <laughs> and about five or 7000 to install it. Oh, yeah. However, the government refunds 30%, according to oh. the company. 
Whoa. Okay. Just uh, any and number? Just 30%. <laughs> because you just hike that up and then like... I'm, I'm figuring out ways to commit government <laughs> fraud. But anyway, Thir okay, 30%. 30 percent if you're just um, a regular customer. If you're a business, they said you can write it off all the first year if you want, the entire cost oh. of it. Whoa. So, so that would make it much more acceptable to a business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so 25,000, say 30,000, and the government's going to give you 9,000, you in for 21,000. Right. So. Right. Interesting. That's anyway. very interesting that you can write it all off in the first year because um, I've been reading some business books. And yeah. You know what? <laughs> I think that law changed somewhat in the past couple of years because I remember if, you know, as a writer, I don't have great business, you know, a printer. Right. And you, you could take 50% of the print of the first year, exactly. and, you know, and then, yeah. uh, right. But he was saying, uh, you can write it off. Needed to all like, in, in was one, it amortization so. or something? Yes, ex business. yes, exactly. <sighs> I, My CPA I mean, figures that out. <laughs> I, know. I mean, I'm, I'm still writing off uh, typewriter ribbons from uh, 40 years ago. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yes. At the rate of 38 cents a year. Right. Um, Interesting. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I, I thought that was uh, pretty neat. I now I, I, it's actually, to be honest, I uh, I, I kind of wish I would have guessed now because I would have guessed way higher. I would have guessed in the like hundreds of thousands. Um, Twenty five thousand for one flower doesn't seem all that bad. Is is when you think of like like um, you know I'm. I don't, I don't actually have any context on this, but I would assume that even something like a water fountain, <laughs> you know, adding that into a mall is like $1,000 for the water fountain and then, you know, $300, $400 to get it installed. You know, at 25, if you really feel like that would get you more customers, you put it next to the interstate so people can see it as they drive up. Yeah. Oh, you know? oh that's in, yeah. Yes. In other words, it would it would be producing electricity. Right. But it would also be um, it'd be an a attraction. It, yeah, it'd be an attraction. Yeah. Like, hey, we we use solar panels to generate energy for our for our business, um, and uh, and also we get a big old you know get thirty percent off, which is like what seven thousand five hundred dollars. Um, f immediately, and then we can write it off immediately. Yeah, yeah. This doesn't sound that half bad. That's that's a no. And then there's the solar power plus, which can be equipped with a series of batteries, so that if the power goes out, you can power stuff directly. I guess from the unit. Maybe right. that's the thing you use to uh, charge your car. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But anyway, anyway, I that's think it's a cool. big. I like it. Yeah. I think it's a, co a company that does a lot of commercial solar panels, and they decided to uh, go into uh, a smaller market with uh, this device. I, I like it, too. Uh, okay, something maybe more in your lifestyle was a car. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> that was at the show, and this is it. The Luxury Technology Show. We love this show because it's luxury meets technology, and I think we're seeing both of those in this car, and Anthony's going to tell us what we're actually seeing. This is a 2018 Vanderhall Venice. It's a three-wheel auto cycle, um, and the whole idea is to have a vintage open-wheel sports car look from the 30s, 40s era, um, but have something that's reliable, and uh, as reliable as any vehicle on the road today. Um, it, it has a full instrumentation package. Those are analog gauges, but they're actually digital behind the scenes, um, but they still have the analog look. Uh, the powertrain is a General Motors 1.4 liter uh, turbocharged four-cylinder, 180 horsepower. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what does this weigh and how fast does it go then? It weighs 1,375 pounds. It will do zero to 60 in 4.3 seconds and it will do 60 to zero in under 100 feet. Um, it has power brakes. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's, it combines the best of both worlds. You have your vintage 
retro uh, looking sports car, but it's reliable. Every time you turn the key, it's going to start. Great. And, and now, are there any restrictions on a three-wheel vehicle on roads? There are none. Um, you can drive this anywhere you could drive an automobile or a motorcycle. There are no restrictions whatsoever. Uh, just requires a regular driver's license in 47 states. In 47 states. Yeah. And the price of this guy, we have leather seats. Yes. Um, leather seats, uh, the four-cylinder turbocharged engine. It comes with heated seats standard, okay? It also has a heater uh, built in, so on those chilly days, you can still enjoy it. Um, I'm it also has 50. a 400-watt audio system, uh, amplified, it's Bluetooth connected. So that's all standard. And the price is? The price is $29,950. $29,950. Wow. $29, and available now. And the company's website is foxhole.com? Vanderhall, VanderhallUSA.com. VanderhallUSA.com. It's really beautiful. Wow. I'm, 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 my guess was way off. <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing is, uh, I found this on Jay Leno's garage. Oh. And his guess was $50,000. Yeah. What, you know, great minds and think alike. Yes. Me and, and, Jay. and he was, he was saying, he said to the, the owner of the company was there and he said, I don't know how you can build these with this quality and make money at under thirty thousand yeah. dollars, and if you if you go, there's a little video. Uh, if you go, click on that, and just go to twelve minutes. You can see. Woo! That looks cool. Okay, uh, yeah, right, right there. They, he, he'll take it out. There you go. That's if hilarious. you want, uh, <laughs> hoax boss said uh, vehicle twenty nine thousand, hospital bill three hundred thousand. Exactly. Uh, but it's Million. very, very low to the ground. I mean, uh, anyway. It's pretty neat. And I've seen more, I've, I feel like, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just where I live now, but I feel like I've seen more and more of these sort of like recreational temporary vehicles around of these trikes, the, you know, these things that are like nice, um, but really not like a practical car <laughs> you know you know like, you know uh, uh, exactly car. yeah this this would not be a good thing for new york you want a place right. where it's sunny a lot of the time and I, I, the spokesman called it an auto cycle um you don't need to wear helmets with it and he said it's legal i think he said in in for some reason just 47 of the states uh on any road so yeah if you're looking for something different yeah this is, these are good gadgets, you know. Yeah. All, right. Uh, All right, now. And so far, so affordable. That's <laughs> really just been, been the theme of this episode. Just so affordable. So affordable. Okay. Get your price ready okay. for the wine cab, okay? Now, I saw it. I, I guessed... I won't tell you which way my guess was, but let's watch the video on their website. It, they had it in a very dark room so that the lights would. Anyway, here, here's the video, and this is exactly how it works. Okay. Traditions live on, even as technologies <laughs> push vineyard the boundaries sold of our world. separately. Just this video has added an extra zero. <laughs> yes, exactly. Here we, we go, folks. Here we are. What? The most evolved wine collection management system, the Wine Cab, featuring oh, the no. first robotic arm ever for the home. Wine Cab is the ultimate display case, beautifully lit and presented in custom wood cabinetry. Now, you can have the very best of your collection, closer than ever. Take full control and elegantly organize the door your for inventory you. while discovering the wine rich out. knowledge on your collection. Effortlessly replenish your favorite wines with seamless in-app purchasing. Is that Liam Neeson? As the voice, the wine it cap maintains like optimum temperature like and humidity levels at all times, ensuring your vintage bottles retain their exquisite characteristics until the day you are ready to retrieve them. 
until the day you die. <laughs> yeah. And the t- until Perfectly the day your balanced. bank account runs out. The wine cap <laughs> gives you versatility while providing the ideal storage environment. Old world traditions have met tomorrow's technology, making this perfect pairing. Wine cap, elevating your collection. All right, now before you guess your price, <laughs> okay, I said, well, how do you input all the info on the wine? And the lady said, you just open this bottom drawer, you put all your wine in it, and then it automatically closes. Then the robotic arm picks up each bottle, moves it to a scanner. The scanner has 600,000 label information in its memory. It tells you. I hope it, ha- it, I hope it can scan two buck chuck. Uh, that's... <laughs> I know, I know. I said, I said, I couldn't get one because it doesn't pick up cardboard boxes and it doesn't, <laughs> exactly. it doesn't do screw off caps. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, all right. So now, now okay. that you, okay. Uh, a few more things. It's nine, it's over nine feet high. You pick the woods you want it to be. Right. You, you, you LED, it comes with two iPads, an iPad that, uh, sits on the side of the wine cab so you can read stuff there and a separate one for the table so that it can tell you what wines you're drinking with what. Anyway, okay. And now how much would you pay? I, this is, I, I feel like this is six figures. I mean, this is, this is expensive. I'm thinking that this is like 100K, 100 I would guess like 120K. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm looking at the chat room. Uh, I'm thinking this is... Oh, well, okay. okay. Be- Becky's in for 50,000. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Okay. All right, well then, in that case, I have a bargain for you. I'm good. <laughs> Here we go, 30,000. I'm so bad when it comes to expensive stuff. On. Oops, I'm accidentally that's replaced that's the video. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, Mom's they got versus... Liam Neeson to do the voiceover. Yes, that's true. I have a particular well, set of right. skills and food. <laughs> Why? Uh, of everybody in the chat room, Mom's worth is the closest. Go uh, Several 45K. Okay, it, the list price is $70,000. 70000 However... With the code Gizwiz, <laughs> well, you, we you just, don't need you, that's don't, all you we don't need, need really. you, you don't need the code Gizwiz because there is an introductory offer till the end of October oh, wow. for for ten thousand dollars off. Whoa! So you're so you're in for that's the down um, payment right there. <laughs> Sixty thousand um, dollars. You can uh, buy the wine cab and use the ten thousand dollars as the down payment on your solar flower. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is this is you know this is obviously for a house that just really you just want to impress everybody. I mean, this a- is just... absolutely, absolutely. And then someone, uh, one of the press people there, said, "How about a single serve?" And they said, "Oh, that is a coming option oh where the God. arm will pick a bottle, uh, put one of those needle devices in it." Take out one single glass, put it on that counter, push the glass out, put the wine back up on the shelf again. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this this is the kind of thing you could have in a James Bond movie. Exactly. I, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- this right here, it looks like it's presenting you the bottle. It's like, here, is this the bottle? Yes. Bottle? Yes. Okay. yes. And then there notice go. he goes. He says, "Oh, okay. I'll put it on the shelf for you. Don't bother opening the door." Let me just push it through. He said, I'm, right. now he opens the door. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, they don't have any other motorized thing other than the arm, which is pretty hilarious. This is great. I mean, I just love that. Is yeah. Listen, <laughs> we got this motorized arm. The arm is going to open the door for you. Push the wine forward. We don't, we're, we're no other motors other than uh, this arm. No, that's exactly. And then he, he pulls the shelf back and he closes the door. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That is, uh, that is uh, awesome. That is really awesome. It's pretty awesome. neat. It's, it's pretty neat, yeah. Uh, I love the fact that it takes the wine in and then compares it with 600,000 labels 
that I'm sure they're upgrading all the time. Yeah. Just but no see, ripple. Like, yeah, I'm just, I wonder how many of these they sell. That's really what I, I want to know. I, have, I, I have really no want to know that because I'm thinking that they sell like you know twenty a year, and you gotta keep be. you gotta keep like the staff to keep the app updated, the, the robotics. Like I'm like I, that's why I threw such a high price out there. Is I'm like yeah. well, this seems company, like a huge company. This seems to be their first gadget. They said that they're going to go into health gadgets and safety gadgets using their robotic uh, technologies. So, well, this is the one thing that you, we will probably not see, say as seen on TV. No. Uh, no, no. Yeah. And if you spend, wait, but wait. Just but, but does it extra fold clothing? clothing? Really? And get, that's all. I just need it to be the foldy mate. You know, it doesn't fold yeah. clothes. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Just pay Buy extra postage. One get and another get... one. Just pay shipping and handling. Yeah. That's the other thing is there's probably tons of hidden costs. Okay, you bought it, but now you actually want it installed. Okay, here you go. Oh, you want the app that to be, be updated? Oh, that'll cost two thousand dollars. Yeah, that could be. Oh, you know, Chicken Head Twenty One has a good idea. The company can now say. As seen on gizwiz.tv. There you go. Wonderful. The, As seen on, yeah, James Bond's villain's uh, lair. <laughs> it's great. Okay, with that, let's jump into... Chad's... You know you don't need <laughs> it, but ha! you might yeah. want it Whoa. at Chad's Crappy Corner. Oh, you got your own wine cab. Exactly. Yeah, this is ex <laughs> not quite, not quite. Okay, so we are taking a look at another Halloween gadget. And one of the reasons that um, I left this one in this bag is because I ordered it from Amazon and this is how it came. It's just this is its packaging inside of a, a bag. You just got a bag oh, okay. full of stuff. So this is called the Wizard wand wizard stick wizard stick and Ooh. i went ahead and opened it just because i was afraid that uh, i wouldn't be able to figure it out live but we're just going to do a live demonstration of it so this is something to kind of add a little bit of ambiance to your halloween party Ooh, and just kind of maybe just a fun little thing to give your kids so this is what it is, is the with the wizard stick kind of looks like a paraphernalia of some flavor, but um, it all it does is it generates smoke. So let me just show it off to you. You have to kind of warm it up just a bit, and then there you go. It'll create Ooh. a whole bunch of smoke. So it does a, it does a pretty good job, um, and then I'll go into kind of how it does it and, and the techniques to do it. So, ooh, there you go. Wizard smoke, the wizard stick. <laughs> Um, so it takes eight AA batteries in the base. You have to get at that with a, with a screw, and then you can put the AA batteries in there. Then it comes with a whole bunch of smoke juice. Uh, and this is super fluid, they call it, from Zero Toys. There's like five different names on here. It says super fluid uh, Zero Toys, and then at the bottom it says Spaceship Earth. So I'm not exactly sure why they decided to brand it all those different things. Uh, and then you take that and you put it into a little itty bitty reservoir here on the wizard stick. And it does not take a lot. I was thinking I would like, like you get so much that I was thinking that you'd like fill up the whole thing and you really do not need to fill it up all that much. You're also only supposed to fill it up about two thirds. So I'll, I'll add some more fluid in there. And the fluid, it's just, it's that bottom reservoir right there. Itty, itty bitty amount. Oh, I see there. it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, so it's very small. And then you can also empty it from the other side. So fill one side, empty the other side. Then you have kind of a dual action trigger. You can press this button in and you'll see that this light turns on whenever you press it in. And that'll just start the heating element at the top. Then when you squeeze, it will push all of the smoke out. So you do need to push the button for about mm, two, three seconds uh, to kind of get that element heated. And then you can just... 
Now, now can you keep your hand on it? Will it keep smoking or does it do like a puff and stop? It kind of does a puff and stop um, oh, just okay. because I think that the second action is really just pushing a little bit of air up. Oh, I see. Okay. And so you kind of have to release that in order to get it again. And also, you, I feel like as it releases that smoke, it loses a lot of its heat. So you got to oh, kind of okay. let it heat up again. And then you can, can push it up. But <clears throat> so here's some interesting things is that it doesn't, it doesn't have a smell. There's like zero smoke smell, which I've had to deal with other smoke things in the past. And that was kind of annoying is that it smelled very smoky. This liquid stuff feels very oily. It feels really, really oily. So it might be a type of oil. Uh, and then also it dissipates like mist, like a like just you know air vapor. I don't seem to see it in the air all that much. Now there was on the Amazon page that you could kind of like fill a glass with this smoke. Ooh. Also, you can kind of see. I don't know if you can see it's dripping. It looks like there's a little bit. Is of, it leaking? Yeah, like see right here. What I think it is is it's condensation. Oh, I see inside it. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. There's condensation yeah. inside of that nozzle, and so it kind of drips a bit whenever you uh, tilt it. And I had some of that stuff on my arm, uh, also. But you can fill a glass with smoke, and there we go. I'm just trying to get a whole bunch in here. Here we go. And then you can pour it out. So you got the smoke. Let's go to the wide. And then I can take this and I can pour it. Ooh. Oh, well, that's nice. That. Yeah, so there's some kind of fun little things uh, that you can do with it. Now, inside the glass, I have noticed, it does leave a weird residue inside of that glass. So the glass oh. is not as <laughs> as as uh, as clear as it was before. Is now, it leaving what, stuff all over your desk? Not really, no. Not really, okay. Not really. So it, it's it seems fairly clean. It just seems like in um, close quarters. And also it does it does, you know, condensate on inside of the uh, wizard stick too. So you go, you got this. And then it'll settle down a bit. And then See, doesn't that look cool? That looks kind of neat. I, I like it, yeah. We got some stuff in there, and then we should be able to pour it out. Ooh. Pretty neat. Pretty neat stuff. Yeah, and you're getting a fair amount of, of uh, smoke from that one little bit that you put in there. Yeah. Now, uh, a few people on Amp, you know, so it's kind of fun to play with, basically. That, that was kind of how I felt it, uh, that was the end of the story. But I did read a few of the Amazon reviews, and there were some people using them in pretty interesting ways, like in photo shoots to get some atmosphere, to get oh. some like, fog and some atmosphere and stuff like that. So they might do that for a photo shoot, take a photo, and then you got this cool wispy smoke um, in the air, which I thought was pretty neat. It's not too expensive. It's more on the expensive side of things that I've covered on the Gizwiz. It's $23. Oh. And so it's not well, too bad. Well, I guess bad. So it's going to be 25 so not yeah. too bad. Exactly. And it's fairly well customer reviewed. So in, in the middle there when it comes to uh, the reviews. Now, this is, this is not sold separately. This is like a little can thing. I was hoping that I might be able to do that with the wizard stick, but... And after purchasing it, I realized that is a separate thing to get that sort of stuff. But this, you can uh, you can pull off. So here's some customer reviews. This is what the uh, nice for smoke generator. So this is like this image oh, that yeah. she created with uh, with the smoke. And there it is, the wizard stick. So all in all, pretty okay, pretty pretty an okay little gadget. It's a fun little toy. Um, and then it also, it does come with, uh, good instructions. That's another nice thing about it is that the instructions have, uh, have, uh, photos and, and pretty good about, uh, how to use it and everything like that. One thing that I was just wondering is I wonder if this fluid is like <laughs> toxic or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I know. Um, it doesn't really caution if fog causes eye or skin irritation, stop. Um, it doesn't really say. Ingredients are 
propagel glycol, glycerin, distilled water, and are commonly used in food and what and distilled water and are commonly used in food, drugs, and cosmetics, and has been tested and reviewed by an independent laboratory. Okay. Yeah, Murray. <laughs> yeah, Murray. Exactly. <laughs> Murray. Murray tested it. It seems fine. It's good. Yeah, and and anyway. Murray's very independent. He hardly comes in <laughs> three days a week. Exactly. And we pay him for five. <laughs> so there you go. That is the uh, oh, wizard I, I stick. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I thought it was kind of a fun little toy. Um, and and I, I would li- I would be cool if I could find some use for it also like maybe on Halloween. Um, but uh, it's a little bit limited. I don't know if I'm going to you know, welcome people to the, the house. Hello. Welcome. Um, welcome to the house. Ah. I don't know. It doesn't seem all that interesting. It, could, it, w- it would be good for special effects in Hollywood and stuff like that if you needed to pull off a smoke effect. With that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away. He takes them out to play in Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Our video is from a frequent contributor, Mo. And I'm using it tonight because Mo is coming to the meetup and I don't have to mail him his mad magazine nice. and outfit picture. You also don't uh, have to explain that, in person why you haven't used his video yet. It's just that's me. right. That's right. <laughs> uh, so it's a very, very old gadget he got as a gift, and you'll see it here. Hey, Dick and Chad. Today I bring you another gadget. This is a find that was made by my wife and my son. It's the Polaroid Land Camera 700 series. I found it. I found the manual on Polaroid.com. Or, wow. I'm sorry, OrphanCameras.com. And uh, this is the old camera manual itself. It's from the 1950s. And it's, it's so amazing how much, you know, we've come. Uh, we get our... I mean, 1950s, I can't even imagine how much this camera cost. And, you know, we could buy something like this that's much more high resolution. And this only cost me $20. But anyway, it's still interesting how far we've come. I love the box. You know, the box is falling apart, <laughs> as you can see. But it's kind of made out of really good material, leather and wood. And you can see it's uh, in pieces. And these are some of the, I guess this is the lens that came for it. And some of the paperwork that came with it. I bought it at a, uh, well, I didn't buy it. My wife and my son per- bought it for me at a salvation type store. Um, it's the camera itself. It's an old Polaroid, so. It was and and for I don't remember time. that. This is a Polaroid. On this thing here. That takes roll film. The whole thing up. The whole thing opens. Interesting. Is it? It's not instant. Yes, it is instant. Oh, weird. On the and the inside. These are where the controls are. Inside. This was actually. I bet you. I could not find the price on this, but my guess is it was very expensive. Something very satisfying over those clicks. Yes, Click, yes. Clunk. This is, I guess how you used to get your film through here itself. Somewhere there. Let's see, is it this side? He's oh, looking yeah. for the film slot. There it is. Anyway, no, oh, here up, it is. up there it is. That's where you get the actual film coming up. Pretty cool. Um, Gonna make a great piece on my uh, shelf of old gadgets in good condition, and I'm um, happy that they found it and bought it for me. I think they paid about five dollars for it. Wow! Steal? Uh, yeah. If you like the video, it's yeah. on eBay for between forty and a hundred. Wow! That's a that's a bargain. That's a, a investment. Perfect. 
Very yeah. cool. Um, and then, so I was trying to find out about Polaroid cameras that used film. And this young man made a video. He has one of these cameras, and I don't know where he got it. But he found, I think he said, film that is 48 years old. Okay. Wow. So and this is this looks very similar to. It's a very uh, similar. I, I believe that they had seven models, uh, but I only remember the packs. But so here he is opening uh, ancient film because no one is making. Uh, uh, I, I think um, Fuji makes a film for a packet old, old uh, Polaroid cameras that take packages of film and he's loading it in wow i know it's very There's complicated two rolls in there yeah it, yeah yes because i guess one is like the the uh film back and then one oh i see i see i see the, yeah the, the, the chemicals oh he probably has to feed that through the uh yeah he had this, a little yeah. bit of trouble and then first of all I guess because of light leaking in, you have to pull out this incredibly long leader. See, yeah. all that has to come out. Um, <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> I know. So then he, he actually so he takes a photo. He takes a photo and then he goes in there and gets the photo. So right. that's it. Now, uh, it, it comes with a thing, I think, like Fixer. That you have to take the picture and fix it with this liquid goop. And I think wow. he's having trouble with it because the goop, I think, has just dry. dried out, yeah, dried out uh, for all, all these years. And that's the one photo. And then <laughs> that's the picture of the what books. What a good photo. And, oh, and, and apparently the, all of this trash for just one picture. Well, at least it turned out pretty good. And goodbye, and thanks for watching. Wow, that is a ton of trash. <laughs> that is. I mean, but that's amazing. I don't know where he found someone who had a box of film from 48 or 50 years ago. Wow. Um, but anyway, Mo, that was fun. That was a, uh, a fun to see that old, 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 old uh, Polaroid, even before. But they came out with the, the Polaroid uh, film packs. Yeah, totally. Very cool. And now let's move on to the letter. Balik in the chat room said fixing is a common process in photo printing. So I guess that tube of gookum that had dried out was actually fixer. Um, nice. Okay. Uh, John Duckworth writes, hi, Dick and Chad. I received the attached postcards in the mail and thought of you guys. What a lucky guy I am. Free lunch to see new products featuring European technology. Ooh, <laughs> European technology. Uh, technology. I was also excited about the picture of the free steak, but it appears that steak is not an option. Um, <laughs> oh, that is funny. You can either have chicken penne or Maui Maui grilled fish, I guess. Right. Um, uh, I, I can't get a babysitter, so I won't be going. I wonder if they check birth dates at the door. I think also, it says somewhere over there, it says you must be over 30. Oh, this invitation is for people over 30. But I don't know if John realized that they were inviting him to a 100% free lunch. And that the invite is for 9.45 a.m. So my guess is that there's going to be two to three hours of trying to sell you something <laughs> before we get to lunchtime. Before we get to lunchtime, that doesn't even have steak. Yeah, they started at nine forty-five. That way, it can get you know two hours, and then at you're least. you're constantly there waiting for lunch. You're just yes. you just, just gotta wait yes. and wait and wait. 
Yes, That's John, hilarious. I wish it had gone, actually, because my guess is you would be very disappointed. Although European uh, technology <laughs> is quite something. Yeah, quite something. just all the technology from Europe, European yeah, technology. Yeah. It's great. European technology, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Anyway, John, thank you for the uh, letter. And before I forget, uh, Mo, thanks for the video, but we need more videos, okay? So a video, anything Anything that has to do with a gadget, uh, make a video, uh, two to three minutes, put it on YouTube. There's a drop down menu, click unlisted if you only want people you send the URL to to see it. And send your that URL to us at mail at gizwiz.tv. Mail at gizwiz.tv. Anything to do with a gadget. Perfect. Also want to say, um, don't forget, we have the meetup. We mentioned it at the beginning of the episode. But if you happen to be available in New York City, come to the meetup. Head on over to Dick's blog and log to find out more. It's October 21st at 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., 4.30 p.m. Um, Eastern Time. So head on over there to find out more and RSVP or head on over to gizwiz.tv around 2.30 uh, Eastern Time for the show. I want to give a big thank you to our patrons over at patreon.com slash gizwiz. You guys make the show happen every single episode. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Waffles thanks you. Say thank you, Waffles. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> and if you like the show, please consider, consider giving back over at patreon.com slash gizwiz where we make the same Dunb show every single week. If Patreon's not your thing and you want to give via PayPal, we have a PayPal link on our website on the Patreon tab, but just click the PayPal link on that page. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that's where you can find this show and watch us live, 4.30 Pacific time, 7.30 Eastern time, and join the chat room just about every Thursday. And... I don't want to jinx us, but I think <laughs> a lot of Thursdays moving forward will be fine. I, uh, uh, yeah, outside of, outside of Thanksgiving, I think we're good. Exactly. And uh, so we hope to see you there. Don't forget to play What the Heck Is It over at gizwiz.biz. Uh, that is the game show online. Uh, so, And we're coming up to the end of the month now so we're boy getting, we're, we're getting there yeah like yeah, two weeks exactly so get a, over there and get a guess and this is the gadget the whole gadget um and it's pretty obvious uh to me that this is a uh, uh this is a really old-fashioned way to sort your coins uh, you just throw a whole bunch oh. of a pile of coins in there, and they roll in and be sorted. I don't know. If you think you know what it is, get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. There are six mad magazines for correct answers and 12 mad magazines for hilarious, clever, interesting, and funny answers. So get a guessing over at gizwiz.biz. That about wraps it up for this episode. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. Thank you.